Okay, so this is going to be a quick intro video on how I edit a photo from raw pretty much to completion. Um, here we have a female goldfinch that I took with the 600 millimeter f4 um, prime on a Sony Alpha 1 body with a 1.4 teleconverter at 100 ISO and 125th 125th of a second. Um, I took this on May 12th of 2022, so the female goldfinch is finishing up her molt from winter colors into spring summer colors. The females have a really pretty olivey tone that isn't quite reflected properly here, but we'll color correct that. We're also going to remove some of the screen color cast on the feathers and work on the iris a number of other things that we'll address as we go along. This is a crop, so that tells you exactly how small these birds are in reality. I'm 20, 21 feet away from the bird, and I still have to crop down this much. Now, if I were a true minimum focusing distance, which is 4.5 meters, I believe, um, I could fill it up a lot more. But at a certain point, you do just have to crop for the smaller birds. Which is fine, because there's plenty of room for that. And I don't have the issue with cropping that some people seem to. I think to make a compelling image, part of the reason you have these huge sensors, in fact, the only reason you have these huge sensors in a high-speed camera like the A1 is so that you can crop so that you can get more compelling, more dynamic shots. And I feel like people shouldn't be afraid to do that. And because most people do, whether they admit it or not. And so now whether you want to outright take things out, add things, all that, that that's a whole other discussion. But a simple crop. And the whole point of looking at a bird photo to me is to see the detail, to feel connected to the animal, okay, from a distance. In a much more detailed and spectacular way, generally, than you would normally. Because this is a backyard bird that all along the northeast and of the United States and in Canada, this would be southeast for Canada, and, you know, just the east coast of the United States. I mean, this is the American goldfinch, and they're everywhere and they're spectacular and you don't realize how truly spectacular they are until you're looking at a photo like this i mean just the the feather detail alone and this hasn't even been sharpened and processed through uh topaz yet or anything this is just out of camera so in any case um what i start with is my auto adjust for levels and rotation i don't do the white balance exposure contrast blah 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 for photos in general just because i like to have the most control over this as i can where i don't care as much is with the auto levels because it does a good job honestly of bringing things to us an appropriate direction and situation so we get the most dynamic range as we can. So as you can see, we're still veering a little to the left um, as far as underexposure within our histogram, which is fine. I'll go into all this in more detail in future, but again, we'll start speeding this up because it's supposed to be quick. Um, right at the top, I know that I'm going to have to do shadow increase. I generally do 20, which just brightens up the whole image you know, raises some detail out. And then I do the counterintuitive thing of negative 20 on the black, which darkens things down a bit. And what that does, in my opinion, is it gives us a better tonal range, a better contrast, um, micro contrast, black point, all that kind of good stuff. So you see more while retaining a lot of the drama. Now for me, I started on this photo with editing the background color, okay? to make it big make it back to what it looked like at the time to do that i selected pretty much the entire green which i did with the magic brush just click it'll select it 
on you on the whole video on the magic brush because that's an amazing tool and then we turn the mask off and then we go over to color tab advanced you use your color picker click it right there clearly and then we've altered the saturation and that's about it on this one we just up the saturation entirely i like the underlying hue it just didn't have enough for me and this is what it looked like at the time when i took the photo the next up is the yellow balance for the bird itself the reason i split it out obviously is because if you had a, a mask going over the entire photo yellow and green will affect each other they just will and so you have to split out the layers and i'll show the mask on this one as well um let's see if i can do it there we go so you have to split out the layers select the areas that you want to edit and then come in with your color picker and fix it some so there we go i've taken it brought it closer to the yellow we've maintained the olive complexion a little more orange it's just a more accurate color at this point so we took the lightness down one we upped the saturation minorly we moved the hue towards the orange so from there the next important step was getting rid of these greeny tones here and here I'm assuming that's what I did let's see um, with the uh, again with the magic brush so that anything that has this pixel density and color and tone gets selected all right and so what I did was I literally just upped I changed the white balance to counteract the green and more magenta means less green and I'm sure I did well we can just see what I did so I upped the warmth and I upped the magenta and that took away the vast majority of the green uh, that was concerning me so from there we can go ahead and click on the dodge and that is focused on the iris this is a thing that I personally do on essentially every video and not, not video necessarily every photo and it just allows it doesn't seem like it does much here but what we've done is we've taken absolutely nothing and we've raised it up by two tenths of a stop with the exposure that's just the auto setting with the brush and then for this one we're gonna add brightness okay so now we've drawn out the iris it's subtle when you're out at true viewing distance but it does matter it adds a lot of dimension and character I think to the bird so now we can take a look at our exposure alerts I'm not as worried about things where we're not trying to have a lot of detail like this right here first off it's blown out and without doing some serious stuff to it that's going to make everything else look wonky it's not going to be that much improved uh, and so i tend to leave things like that now if it were a very obvious major oh my god i either would trash the photo or i'd play with it a whole lot more but so in any case the that's the process i mean and we'll show the before and after here so this is just the images that came out with some basic adjustments and the basic threshold raw development and then here's where we ended up so in any case um like follow subscribe all those good things i i don't like harping on that a whole lot but it does help and it does allow the channel to uh, grow and for you to be alerted when i do future content if you enjoyed this so i appreciate your time and um yeah i will uh see you for the next one all right